Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, good whatever time of day, maybe for you ladies and gentlemen. I'm the Layback Gamer, and... Wow! I wasn't expecting to be here so again. Oh, boy, oh boy, oh boy, we got a few things to talk about. Mainly, well, uh, one thing mainly to talk about. RimWorld Biotech, the next DLC has been announced, and of course it happens to be almost at 11 o'clock at night. On a work night, but you know what? I'm I'm still happy to see another DLC. So I have a funny enough, actually, I was also in the middle of making a a video about something, some DLCs that uh, we could. I, I was hypothesizing about for 1.4. I would be. I thought, hey, could be some cool ideas. Even recorded some RimWorld today and kind of shared a little bit of that. And well, yeah. Now the po now the post came out, and I guess well that just made that video completely redundant. So we're gonna go ahead, kind of I guess live react to this, and I'll give you guys my thoughts, similar to how I did when 1.3 ideology came out, which by the way still uh was actually quite popular at the time. Anyways, RimWorld's third expansion, Biotech, is coming out in a few weeks. We're also making the free one vanilla 1.4 update for if available now for play on un on Unstable Steam Branch. More details about that in the post near the bottom. I'm assuming that's probably probably for modders mainly to so that they can make a smooth transition into 1.4. As oh boy, everything's going to break. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. All right. Anyways, let's uh, let's get into this. And yes, I will be uh, once the once Biotech comes out, I'm gonna be playing it through a vanilla with all the LC playthrough, just to explore it out. Uh, hopefully, I can continue on the current series of RimWorld Vanilla Expanded, which is just all the vanilla expanded, plus a couple other mods that I thought were worthy of the vanilla expanded title, primarily. Materials Expanded, that I 100% believe is worthy of the title of Vanilla Expanded. Anyways, About Biotech is focused on three major features. Control mechanoids, including many new neck mechanoid types by making your colonists into a mechanator, raise babies and children, reproduce and create families by both natural and artificial means, genetically modify children and adults, and interact with new gene modded factions. Okay, that's pretty exciting. I was wondering if we were ever going to see this feature added into game, the uh, babies and children. I, now part of me didn't think it was ever going to come in because, you know, the game's already, well, to be fair, the game is half trying to get off the planet and half the people are just trying to see how badly they could break the Geneva Convention. Oh boy, this is, that's, like, those three alone is amazing many new mechanoid types that's really i'm down for some new mechanoid types and honestly if they're going to expand the mechanoids i could actually see them expanding insectoids which would be that would be crazy too to see insectoids also expanded but in a separate update of course not sure what that would entitle but yeah i well i really hope in that well, well, we'll we'll see. We'll see. Let's continue onward. I don't have a whole lot of time to be able to talk about this. With biotech, colonists and outsiders can become pregnant and give birth. Pre pregnancy can begin naturally or via technological means. It can be controlled by a very variety of methods. Babies bring joy, but also challenges. Colonists' hearts will melt when babies lose and giggles in their arms, but it will take effort to keep a baby happy and healthy and loved. Create a safe haven for them in a cozy past. A pastel nursery where there is always warm milk, a comfortable crib, overflowing toy chests, and kind caregivers. They'll grow up fast, especially if you use a growth fat. Oh my! <laughs> Soon your child will be walking, and talking, and getting into trouble. They'll soak up knowledge in the classroom and take along with adults to watch them work. Kids will find many. It will find ways to entertain themselves with art, exploring nature, playing with technology, and more. Teach them lessons, and they'll learn how to survive, cook, make friends, create art, build, craft, hunt, and fight. Watch as they grow up, and they make mistakes, lose loved ones, and survive hardships. Oh boy, Rip World, no longer about a game about just people trying to survive. Now we have to get the children. Oh crud, I, I missed a... Oh, I missed a good Star Wars quote there. 
Oh, I missed a good chance for a Star Wars quote there. A rich child would make a capable adult. Every few years, you could choose which traits and passions a child will develop. The better raised a, ch a child is with smarter education, more attention, the more choices you'll have, and the better their chances are to become a happy and talented adult. Some colonies will sacrifice everything to give the child the best upbringing, while others will use growth vats to pump out cheap workers and soldiers. The choice is up to you. Ah... Uh... Okay, interesting. Very interesting. I wonder, uh, since you can artificially create it, it does this mean that artificially... Could we essentially see, like, a pseudo-clone army being... Or a clone colony being constructed where... I may be thinking a little bit, in, a little bit too much into that. It's probably possible? Honestly, I do think that's pretty cool. Also, obsolete's a couple of mods out there. Uh, there's two mods in particular that, if I recall, that uh, at ha I forget what they were called, but two of them that specifically go through colonists being able to get pregnant and then, uh, you know, give birth, raise childs through schools, etc., etc. Go ahead and uh, pop up some of these images here. Uh, um, oh, okay, that's. Uh, Microsoft Edge. Apologies for the uh, not quite the professionalness, professionalism here. What on earth? Okay. We're getting some different species. We are no longer completely human in the rim. Now we have different alien species, so probably more demonic one there, a little more uh, pigmen there. I'm gonna assume a wolf or a fox of some sort. It definitely seems that way. I'm not sure what you would be. Probably a hybrid of the two. I thought I saw... Yeah, there's a red eye down there. Maybe that, that might be an implant, but it's also possible that maybe some of these are androids? Potentially? I'm not 100%. I mean, it, it kind of makes a degree of sense if we saw androids, so here we got, a, we got the classroom setting, and honestly, this looks... Well, pretty nice. I know what you expect to see with the classroom. What it, what material is that? I, I almost want to say that's jade, but I have no idea what this is. So I think we're getting some new materials added into here into the game too. By the looks of it, you get the little kids. Oh, that's are they coming with different uh, sized? Also, I'm noticing this is storing more than uh. I think, if I recall correct, the shelves only could store like, two items on at a time, but I guess if the item's small enough, maybe there's a change in the code that'll allow them to store. Uh, some kids, uh, ooh, some kids may be starting a little, uh, little side business with the, with the beer there. <laughs> oh boy. Oh, oh boy. We're about to break so many laws by playing... <laughs> So many conventions by using this, and I love it. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah, so, okay, we got oh, just a little little house style. Uh, I find this incredibly ironic. <laughs> uh, oh, this is a. Would this be considered? Hmm, that's a good question. Would this still consider? Hmm, I wonder if there's a new system added in to where. If a different species is eating another species, that's not that's that's not considered cannibalism. So see, say these uh, pigmen, which I'm pretty, sh I'm almost wondering if this was Minecraft and insp Mi Minecraft inspired that. If they were eating the corpse, eating the dead humans, that's uh, that wouldn't be considered cannibalism. I shouldn't. So I'm wondering if there's a system in place now that we're getting aliens to. Say well, if it's not the now, you ha, now the game checks to see. Okay, is it the same species as them? And if it is, it checks us off as cannibalism. Otherwise, it's you know like eating a, well, eating pork, eating like eating a chicken. I was about to say eating pigs, but then I realized that the colony's mainly pigmen with a couple human slaves or a few human slaves in there. Which is honestly a nice little touch. Yeah, that's pretty cool. All right, let's keep reading. Uh, oh, hold on. Nope. We still, uh... We got two more photos to investigate here. Oh, wait. No, this is the biotech portion. 
So we'll go ahead and uh, preload these guys as well. All right, the Mechanator. Build and control mechanoids by making your colonists into a Mechanator, a person with, with a special brain implant that lets them psionically command semi-living machines. Uh, kind of like a Persona Core? I believe a lot... It, it, I haven't done it in a long time, but you can install Persona Cores into people. I think one of my very first RimWorld experiences was I installed a Persona Core into one of my... Uh, one of my colonists, and he ended up actually going on a mental rage because the AI didn't actually like people, and therefore it tried to kill them. So that's pretty interesting. I'm wondering if that's going to be like a Persona Core esque thing. We'll see. Create mechanoids by growing them inside high tech gestator tanks. Oh, dang it. They just finished coming out with mech with. Vanilla genetics expanded. Now you gotta go ahead and throw this in. Complicate. This is gonna complicate things for that mod alone. Actually, I think it's gonna complicate things for the ancients as well because they had a. Uh, they also had gene tailoring pods, except it was for uh, psionics. Or powers, sorry. Yeah, they had it for powers. Then, of course, I. I believe, well, I'm not going to get into that tangent where I believe Psycast kind of obsolete the feet, some of the nice features from uh, Ancients. Not all of it, but some of it. Anyways, uh, command, command the original Centipede, Lancer, and Scyther, plus a variety of new combat of new combat and labor mechanoids. Grow your swarm from a few small workers and fighters into a fearsome squadron of massive ultra-tech war machines and industrial behemoths. Alright, that's pretty cool. I like this. The, the ability to play as a... To, to kind of play as a mech hive, if you will, with a bunch of controllers. I actually quite like that. I, that's a really cool idea. If only the insectoids also... It'd be nice if the insectoids kind of got that treatment two where you can command hordes of insects that would be neat as well to see in a future update or maybe there's maybe there's a modder out there who's going to do it or who knows maybe oscar himself the famous vanilla expanded modder maybe he might go ahead and go hey you know what i like this concept for the mechanoids why can't we have it for the insectoids and that might introduce a uh, vanilla ex insectoids expanded version two or, uh, update to it. Anyways, uh, let's get focusing. Mechanoid laborers can manufacture goods, rescue and tend to your colonists, and I'm gonna quickly turn the music down by a touch bit. And build and repair, sow and harvest crops, haul stuff and more. They never get sick, they don't freeze in the snow or get poisoned in toxic fallout. They don't suffer mental breaks from long hours in dark mine shafts or filthy care. There has to be a catch to this. There has to be a catch. Combat mechanoids are very diverse in form and function. Some are cheap swarmers that overwhelm the enemy with numbers others project shields over their allies or roast enemies with beam weapons or charge up for massive concrete melting elsphere attacks mechanoids wield me me melee claws and blades sniper weapons even flamethrowers depending on which mechanoid command you command tactical operations will vary dramatically i wonder how this mod would pair with uh what the hack because this kind of seems like it's a complete replace. Not only a re well, it doesn't. You can't hack into mechanoids, and you can't. Can you take over original mechanoids with this, or does it have to be made the ones that you made? Because if it's the what, if you can't take over mechanoids, then I actually could see what the hack still continuing to exist because you can then make a you no know, maybe a secondary. Uh, brain implant that would allow people to control instead of having it from a device or maybe it's like a step down from it I'm not sure but we'll f they'll figure something out mechanoid infrastructure has a special price okay that's what I thought pollution left unfrozen toxic waste packs deteriorate and leak pollutants into the environment pollutants make living a thing sick it poisons your colonists and pets it blocks out the sun with smog and in it takes your colonist lungs. It triggers hibernating insects to emerge on the planet's surface. Some areas of the planet are so 
Oh, polluted that once twisted toxin adapted variants of plants and animals could survive there. Ooh. Now I'm now you have you have my intrigue. Pollution is a challenge that you can handle in a variety of ways. Freezing export neighbors might not like this. <laughs> Adaption, high tech, atomization. You know what? It, let's commercial it. Let's uh let's uh capital let's capitalism or activate capitalism on pollution. Huh, now wouldn't that be the day? That would be a very weird day for humanity. All right, let's take let's take a look at the photos here. So uh, we're gonna start with this uh, this one. This looks like the, uh, the biotech activating here. Or what is this? They they got a pack of bears, so he's commanding. Hmm, I'm not exactly sure what I'm looking at. It looks like they're commanding a bunch of animals. Maybe there's a little more to this biotech it, through the gene modification. <sighs> Oh, okay. Oh my, I like the, I like the look of this. All right, this honestly, I thought this was like a like a heat gun or a melt ray, something along those lines. That looks pretty cool. That's a nice looking weapon. There you can see. Uh, you have the paramedic. So that's one of the new mechanoids. You have paramedic. Is that a child? Is that a child wielding a weapon in the middle of... Oh my goodness. Yeah, you really can't take it that far, can you? <laughs> child soldiers, ladies and gentlemen. Congra uh, congratulations. We have now broken a new level of the Geneva Convention. Or was child... Sol is child soldiers? I, I was just looking at it earlier. I, you think I would remember what was on the Geneva Convention because I was looking at it earlier as well. Uh, in my video, I had recently unlocked the Chronomancy Path, thanks to Vanilla Psycasters Expanded, and uh, and that led to, well, I started aging prisoners, actually aging, aging slaves, and then aging prisoners. And I've wondered, is this does this break the Geneva Convention by any means? I don't know if this is considered inhumane or not. I... Don't know. Let me know in the comments section. Let me know in the comments section about your thoughts as well. Uh, Militor 2. I'm assuming that's like a maybe a more of a militia type bot. I'm guessing that's what some of these smaller guys are around here. You got the Scythers, got the Lancers, got the Paramedic, which I'm assuming is a healer. A pikeman. I what is on this guy here? This got to be some well, that's probably marine armor right there, but what's on his back and head? Either that's a... Uh, that's a... Fara that's a... well... A, uh... Different skinned of something that we already have in game, or that's something brand new. Also, I noticed there's new material back there, so maybe this is what made up the, uh... The walls inside the daycare. I could see it potentially making up those walls. I'm not sure what the material would be called. Yeah, it looks about the same color, so I, I would say that it probably is a that and I have no idea what these these guys are uh this is probably uh, it kind of looks a bit of a step maybe a more armored lancer potentially shorter range weapon that deals less power uh this I have no idea probably like a spider mechanoid if I had to take a guess your guess is good as mine on this one and then this guy here it's probably maybe an upgraded centipede, or it, it looks like it's got the centipede, like a similar vert body to the centipede, just a bit different. I'm not sure. That's a new turret. That is a new turret by the looks of it. I guess a mini missile save launcher, launcher. You can see some of the pods down here for the lab. We'll get to that in just a little bit. Originally, I actually thought this was a like a, a mobile SAM site, but it's inside, so that can't be. Alright, let's go to the next one. Okay, here's the lab in more detail. Uh, there's Bravo with... Is that Bravo from here? Yeah, that's Bravo from there. Got more uh, more different species around here. Yeah, yeah, you can stack multiple things on these now. And actually, you could stack more on this. So that's pretty cool. Looks like a bit of junk there. Not sure what this is going to do. More, uh, probably more 
laborers around here. There's a paramedic up there. I don't know what this creature is. I'm very excited to see it. This must be a, a pod. This must be the pod that you use to augment the abilities of the biotech. Anybody who decide to make biotech, that's probably what happens with that in that pod. And then these probably are the G. These are the growth vats, maybe. Might be growth vats, or like some sort of like like high tech advanced fabrication. There's more of these in here. Oh, it looks like it's powering this. Interesting. I wonder what it does. Nothing is attached to that guy's head. That might just be a might be a gun link of some sort. What is that? Oh, I'm just really excited for this. I'm assuming. Hold on a second. Those guys. Yeah. Okay. So these must be like the new, like maybe the basic trooper module, and then the lancer here is a bit of an upgraded form of that. And this one's a more, uh, like, kind of on the same tier as a centipede. Uh, that's pretty neat. I got more shots of this. That looks like a that that claw. Kind of reminds me. It kind of reminds me of a bit of an ultralisk from Starcraft. That's pretty cool. What are these guys? Oh, they might be charging from this. Yeah, that's probably a ch these are probably chargers. The different uh, different mechanoids. You got the small chargers for the small guys. The big chargers for the big for the bigger boys. I still don't know what this material is. I can't tell if this is if this is powering this or if this is creating these it'll be interesting to find out oh uh, that it's a cr is, hold on does it start as a crop then you refine it into that interesting there's a oh the something here i'm assuming this is a is this maybe a way to is a, a pollution generator like a smokestack i can see it possibly Maybe it's supposed to be providing power. I'm not sure. Very fascinating. Okay, this this is probably a mining. Yeah, these two are pro these two I believe are the same. So these guys are the uh, mining ver variants. They're mining up here. That's a big outdoor light. And yeah, just a couple of basic labors. A cleaner, I believe, right there. Some sort of weird tree. Oh wait, no, hold on a second. This is a. Uh... It was to that's part of the uh oh, what's it called uh just read about it uh what happens when a place gets too polluted this is a, this is a plant life that's completely adapted to it oh that's pretty cool i like that and the, these must co oh, come from there and what, what, what this i i think this gets refined into this but i don't know what this is for or uh, i'm still not sure i have many questions uh, mechanoid ray using mechanoid powers something's going on there that i cannot tell at all got more of the growth fats a coffin in there i'm assuming that's maybe a different style of bed yeah another uh another missile launcher here i don't think that's base game or that wasn't base game so yeah that's interesting to see gas masks yeah that's going to be needed in some of these places is that i don't think i'm almost convinced that bravo is a cyborg of some sorts. Gas mask, yeah. Oh, ho, ho, this is the new... Oh, my. Oh, my. Yeah, so the insectoids aren't really happy about this, or it's dark enough to where they'll come up to the surface. The boomalopes, he... Oh, oh. Those poor boomalopes. Oh, what happened to them? They look so sick and depressed. Oh, jeez. Aren't we the bad guys if we go down this path? I think we might be. There's another evolved animal there. Yeah, these insectoids don't create... I'm assuming these are, like, insectoid pods of some sort. These guys re... The insectoids really need to get a little bit of extra love. I don't think they've been touched since they've... Well, I don't think the base game has touched them since they've been added in. I think they... It's about time they get some love going on from the devs. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. That's a wreck of a really big mechanoid. And I'm actually really excited because, well, uh, Oscar is getting ready to release his vehicles expanded. And afterwards, I think War or Spiders is coming out. And I imagine this might be part of it. Oh, that'd be crazy. Wow, this is, this is awesome. I love it. 
poor child, poor pork chop is just hiding from the mechanoids with his dog. Oh, poor kid. That's a new material there. What's that? That's something. That's probably, oh, that, I think that's maybe a toy or some sort. I wonder what this is supposed to do. Valentine that's down with something on her back. Not sure what this is either. No idea what that would do. Probably, uh, oh, it's probably something that gets ejected from the mechanoids. So maybe, yeah, they had a couple around here, so they probably got overwhelmed, and that was maybe something that got ejected off the back of them when they were still in service. That's a shield generator mechanoid. That is a shield generating mechanoid. I like it. Ooh, okay. Something happened here, so... Yeah, it's another red eye. That has to be... Either these are augmented with cybernetic eyes, or... Or this is a new species altogether, like maybe a cyborg species of some type. There's that material again that's being used here. Not sure what's going on in this picture. Maybe, uh... Are they being taken over, or... I'm not sure. That's interesting. And of course you get the insectoid growth pods down here and they're popping out of the ground. Infest the place. Yeah, I'm curious. Maybe this guy was controlling them and now they're down on the ground. He's lost control. Therefore they're going to revert back. What's that on his back? Is that like a, a chem, chem fuel? Or a flamethrower? No, that can't be because he's not holding a flamethrower. Huh, that's quite interesting. There's a crib. Very nice. All right. I think that's all we got for uh, all we got for the mechanator. Got gene tailoring. We'll get to that in just a little bit, or down to here. You can genetically modify people to create xeno humans. Okay, so that's what we were seeing. It, we uh, humans with exotic traits. Genetic modifications range from subtle personality traits and eye color to hulking furry bodies, glands for fire breathing, rapid regeneration, even immortality. Okay, so that's going to be interesting to mix it up with uh, vanilla genetics expanded since they added in their own of genetically modifying. Hmm, I can't wait to see how the two of these mesh together. Uh, oh, and I'll also uh, get these photos loaded up so we can take a look at them in a little bit. The world contains a new set of xenohuman <clears throat> types and factions, including unstoppable super soldiers, fur-covered animal, controlling arctic settlers, toxic immune human bioweapons, fire-breathing hornet desert imp people, psionic bonding concubines, and more. The darkest of them drink blood, live in shadows, and live forever. I'm assuming this is a way to also add vampires and werewolves into the game too, just without calling it that. That's that's awesome. I love it. I love it. You can make your own Xeno xenotypes from scratch and build infrastructure or in your colony to enhance your people. Curate a collection of exotic genes by purchasing them from traders and accepting them as quest rewards, or extracting them from your menagerie of Xenohuman prisoners. You can harvest the genes from anyone and implant those genes into your colonists and prisoners. You can also recombine genes to make bizarre and advantageous mix, mixes of traits for, Im, for implantation. Experiment with gene extraction and recombination to build your colony of xenohumans. That is... I like it. Although, again, I question what's going to happen with Vanilla Genetic Expanded. Surely this is going to throw a lot of what they made. Well, not a lot of what they made, but... I could see them both existing together. Depending on how advanced this is though. If this is if this is high enough in terms of tech, like we're talking glitter world tech, most of the uh vanilla genetic expanded stuff takes place in the across the industrial to glitter world tech range. So depending on how late in the game you could get at or how late or how much you need to invest into this. I can see the two of them meshing out pretty well together. Now we get down to why biotech. Time here, I thought it'd be worth explaining the process about why we decided to make this expansion. Here's what I've been thinking. Mechanoids have been in RimWorld's endgame foe since way back in 2014. Fictionally, however, they are human-created for human pur purposes, so it's natural to extend this and allow the player to control the mechanoids somehow. 
Yeah, I could see that. That makes sense. I'd still like to see something for the insectoids because I'm pretty sure if I know my lore, they may... I don't know if they were also created or... They, they may have been an accidental creation, but it would be nice to see some more insectoids in base game. That's why I designed a system where each mechanoid is linked to a specific person, the mechanator. The mechanoids are an extension of the human who controls them, which all the hu which all human complexity that entails. I also don't didn't want to destroy the economic balance or progression rate of mechanoids. This would have been easy to do. Human beings are inherently quite expensive. They need complex foods, decent living quarters, socialization ships, entertainment, and even rituals with ideal ideology expansion. Yeah, no different from real life. Oh, hold on a second. I forgot to check out the... We'll finish this paragraph off. Uh, in, naive, in a naive game design, a colony of mechanoids could skip most of these needs and be absurdly overpowered. Fun for a short time, but ultimately uninteresting. Yeah, I agree with that. I 100% agree with that. It would be nice to be able to play, have a, like a quick playthrough of you're a mech hive and you're just going out to destroy stuff. Uh, that would make for maybe one or two good playthroughs, and then that's it. All right, let's go ahead, and that was the last one we left off. This is the gene tailoring. This is where we're getting all these really cool uh, genetic modifications. Maybe that's what this is. No, no, that's not what that would do. I'll set a, okay, I'm just going to reset the music here since I've been going on for over ha half an hour. Okay, there's that. There's this again. Maybe. Oh, wait, this is probably the genes. Like a compact set of genes in there. Arquitech, of course, probably for like some super advanced level of genes there in that one. Here they're installing these into them. But th these are probably pat cells of some sort. Maybe the higher the higher the charge, the better the quality. Oh, and there's the growth chambers for uh, looks like for creating different peat for. Growth fat. The, these are the growth fats down here. So you can actually uh, grow your own child really quickly. Easy to make a bunch of cannon fodder soldiers. And there's more of this new material. What is this material? Like, this is nothing. I don't think we. we that, well, nothing that I've seen in game. That's not plasteel, unless plasteel got a retexture. So I wonder what it is. There's another material at play here. Uh, oh, yep, there's the fire breathing, in effect. <laughs> Carrying the babies around, trying to get away from the raiders. Fire breathing uh, desert imps are coming to attack the uh, the pork men, or the pig men. Very cool, very cool. We got here, what on earth is this setup? Okay, clearly you're being infused with something. Something's being, this, uh... Maybe they're really boot like overclocking what they can do with genetics. Yeah, and that's that's probably what the eyes are there. This is a genetic modification to them. All right, that's pretty cool. Oh, packets of blood. Those. Are... Oh, wait. I bet that's what. I bet that's what the these. The, is this draining blood from her? That might be it. Maybe it's draining blood for her. I'm not sure. Those are blood packets there. Very interesting. Very uh, evil looking, I will say that. And of course, there's a ritual going on. They're drinking blood. All sorts of stuff. There's insectoids in the base. Did those be there? I don't think base game added in uh, like insectoid supremacy or insectoid worshipping. That's interesting. Hmm. Are these guys invading the base, or are they actually living amongst? Because I know you could tame me mega scarabs. You can tame. I don't remember if you could tame cephalopods or not. You might be able to. I might be wrong in thinking that you can't, but I know the megapedes can be tamed. I don't think the cephalopod or cephalopods, not cephalopods, cephalopods, and the mega spiders. Yeah, I don't think I know the mega spiders can't. You guys, I. Not 100% sure. Interesting. Making the mechanoids human linked and elevated part of this concern, or, or elevated part of this concern, but they needed another cost since they inherit so much le 
they're inherently so much less needy than uh, than people. Yeah, I, that's what I was saying when I first read it. Like, there's got to be a drawback. There's got to be a drawback else that's just too overpowered. Just eating resources wouldn't feel novel or interesting enough, so we needed a new kind of cost. I decided to explore the concept of pollution. Pollution doesn't cost anything to make, but it encourages challenges that come after. It's a bit like going into debt. Not a problem at first, but if you let it catch up to you, it soon become a transformative challenge. Yeah, uh, I'm sure many people can attest to that. Not me, fortunately. I'm relatively debt-free. There's the occasional... Now the occasional little bit of credit card debt, but that gets paid off at the start of every at the top of every month. So really not in any debt, I guess, then. We made sure there are a variety of ways to approach pollution so the player can choose whether to stay clean, suppress the effects, or just let it happen and adapt to the changing landscape. I wonder if that's what these uh I wonder if that's what these are here. This is maybe uh, is this trying to attempt to quell the pollution? possible we see okay we've seen these inside and outside i don't know what they do maybe this is also an attempt to maybe these structures here is to try and help quell the pollution a little bit what if this is solidified pollution maybe no 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 we, we already discussed that i think this is you harvest these this gets refined into this or this powers this for some reason or for something uh, let's see here, load this up. By the way, I was playing a game of RimWorld before, but uh, now it seems since it's 11.30, I'm going to be going to bed soon. Uh, da -da 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 -da, where was I? This linked nicely with the gene modding system, since some genes can help with pollution resistance. Cool. Pollution itself is designed to be interesting. It interacts with insects, generating them and powering them up. It transforms the landscape visually and economically, replacing normal plants and animals with a new set of pollution-specific plants and creatures. The new Pollux trees is a natural way to alleviate pollution. It's livable, but there are special challenges to living in pollution. Again, like I said, it would be nice to see more insectoid types as well, especially with the, you got, you know, they're getting empowered and emboldened. It would be nice to maybe see like a insectoid brute of some sort since you know, they're getting really tough, really strong. Maybe a ranged insectoid. That's that's for later. Finally, player-controlled mechanoids were going to open up a new way to do combat. In past, player units were limited in how diverse they could be since they are mostly humans. Mechanoids can have a much more exotic type of movement, weaponry, and combat tools. They can also be more expendable than humans. All this opened up opportunities for more types of player-side combat strategies which we've explored in depth with new types of combat mechanoids is given it gives the player more tactical choices in combat and more ways to be aggressive instead of risk avoided so again another uh another way to try and the last update they introduced the breach asks as well as the i think the thermite if i remember correct in an attempt to try and prevent like make it so that raiders are now more likely to open up new points of avenues into the, your base and now this is a okay we're, as most most people ended up uh i don't know if most players turn i never really we, i don't really ever see them this is a good way to also encourage like hey maybe not use kill boxes as much but try for this i can even an example in in my uh vanilla expanded series that i got going on it's uh i got simple bunker really that's it a couple walls to control where they where they can go and a bunker it's not a kill box no not really a kill box per se easily be turned into one but more it's just bundling them into a single pass and having a bunker there in order to take to deal with them the next the naturalness of fiction human connectionness Unique cost strategies made player controlled mechanoids a really attractive design path. It took a lot of work to build build all that, but we had the time and resources to do it right. By the way, this is why I always I recommend, you know, if you if you're a big fan of RimWorld, definitely pick up the DLCs. Even if you don't really, you know, it's just to support the creators because then we get like this is pretty cool. I like to I like to think that help it with purchasing ideology helped 
to give them the funds to be able to produce biotech, and this has a lot of promise and a lot of really cool features. The core design of RimWorld was to generate right production in children. The goal of RimWorld is to generate emotion. Uh, what time? Am I? Okay, I'm at 40 minutes, so uh, I'm gonna have to kind of rapid fire through this pretty quickly. Uh, uh, problem good, is it secret to change? Not good, uh, good stories. So yeah, this, is, this seems to be a bit of a storytelling. They reproduction in children is from a storytelling basis. If uh, if the mechanator is from a game mechanics and just finding new ways to spice up some existing existing things, then reproduction in children would be add on to the story, add on to add a different factor into the story. Last time we had ideology, this time we got children, which I agree that. I like this. <laughs> From no, I am no. I'm not gonna try that. I can't do a James Earl voice. My voice. I'm starting to get dry throat. No, I am your father too. I will find you, and I will kill you. To you are the father. <laughs> oh, I love that. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, this could be pretty caught. It. Pretty complex. Took a long time to get here because of complex reproduction, birth, baby care, and child raising are a lot of fine details and rich content that I knew would take substantial time to get right. I want to make sure that we had the time to develop, make the generate. <laughs> oh boy. It's the longest expansion development cycle currently. With most of the developers we've a ever had, I decided to take fight this big challenge. You know what? I agree with that. Why gene modding? Gene, mo gene modification xenohumans have always been a part of RimWorld's universe fiction. There are ways to explore how biologically different humanoids, uh, like in RimWorld, you know, like everything else, gene modifying. I guess it kind of, uh, I guess this is sort of a mix between the two, so. I believe Mechanators primarily is for, there for gameplay. This one's here for the story. Which I know the two of them, you know, they, they go hand in hand. They, they they go hand in hand. But if you, you know, only focus on like, okay, I want to do things for like storytelling aspect. It might not make for exciting gameplay. Or you know, you do this for exciting gameplay. But as he mentioned, you gotta choose carefully how you do it because otherwise it just, yeah, it makes boring after a while. Yeah, you know, you're trying to tell a story, and all of it, all the time, it ends up in yep. And then I made mech, and then I became a mech high, then killed the world. That's uh, that's not for exciting story either. And this one's kind of in a bit of a mix between the two of them, so fits well with the story and the lore of. I'm not saying that this doesn't, but I, again, I believe this is more tailored towards the gameplay aspect. This is more for. What am I trying to say? Well, all of them are for game. All of them tailored towards gameplay and story aspect. I just believe that this one does more gameplay than story. This one does for more storytelling aspect than gameplay. And this one's a nice little mix in between there. Also had a ton of fun with name generators for the new Xeno. Pigskins. Okay, you called them pigskins. I was calling them pigmen for a little bit. Oh, we got more photos here. All right. So some of the big things start up performance and function spend months trying to optimize and loading times in our testing we loading and say are roughly 37 percent faster thank you thank you for that that'll that probably will help out with mod with loading up mods too so thank you very much for that also thanks for uh thanks for adding in the 1.4 i'm not going to play a beta version of this yet i want to play it when it's out when we have the full features when it's fully as the devs intended so yep Painting and customizing for walls, floors. Okay, so what we saw here then, I guess these are just painted walls. Oh, that, that would also make sense. I thought maybe it was, you know, this material here. I could also, I, I, I'm still not sure what this is. Still not sure what this does. If the if this is actually painted stuff and, well, this maybe this is there to help with pollution potentially. No, that can't be it because this is inside a cooler, so this has to be kept cold. I'm not sure what that does. We'll find out more about that later. So that I like that. A lot more customization. That's very nice. I love it. 
Uh, styles are always available. You can now use all style of all buildings and floors to visually customize even without ideology active. Thank you for that. There have been some really cool... I've been always playing with the uh, the Techist enabled because I love the style the tech of the Techist uh, ideology-esque thing. And it's, you know, it'll be very nice to also have some of that mixed into, you know, mixed in without having to actually play with that style. I, I like that, so thanks for that change. Actually useful shelves that store a lot more stuff. Yeah, that was one of the first things I know. That was one of the first things shown in the very first picture. You can clearly see that. It's pretty center of the screen there. Ah, sorry. Throat's getting, uh... I need to keep the... Hydrated. Two new turrets. Okay, so I did I did notice one of them. The foam's turret spits fire foam to extinguish his blaze nearby. I think did we had an example of that. What was on is there something on fire? Uh was on fire. Oh, these mechs are downed again. I don't know what's going on with that. Um well, I guess this is the remnants of a fire foam turret. We did see the missile launcher there. Uh, and a new rocket swarmer defensive missile turret when triggered to blanket a wide area and small barrage of missiles is ex excellent against large groups of weaker enemies but only work like when you press the button but, but only works when you press down on the button for extra drama all right so then we got two new pictures here too so this is oh this is very nice this is kind of showing off the shelves there and a little bit of the floor customization that you could do very nice, very nice indeed. I like these. These actually make shelves useful. Thank you for this. This is incredible. No longer will we have to keep items just stored on the ground because this would be a waste of resources otherwise, except if you're putting it outside, in which case that's not as useless. And now it's actually, you know, useful. Looks like it's only going to hold three stacks of it. So, you know, it's not busted, but at the same time, that's, you know, I like it. I like this change. Now you can store three stacks of something on one with a shelf. I like it. That's a good change. That's a pretty balanced change. And now it takes an extra step up. And then here we have... Oh, that, that's the fire foam. There we go. That's There's the fire foam turret in action. These require chem fuel in order to work. And then we get the rocket swarmer, which is raining missiles down on the enemy. I like that. That's really nice. That's pretty cool. Um, starting pose starting possessions, depending on your backstory, your starting colony might come with their own possessions. Ooh, not only does it make it a bit easier to start with imperfect colonists, it also gives them a personal touch. Nice. Nice touch there. Rot sink. Keep rotten corpses and meat away from your colonists. In addition to being disturbing to look at, decomposing tissue now releases rot stink gas. Ooh. I guess we gotta now start to burn every body that we see a bit more diligently. Or, or if we, you know, you're cannibals, you just eat them a bit quicker. Colonists that are chronologically exposed to rot stink may develop new lung rot disease. Keep extra great, keep extra empty graves and garbage dumps available for times when you're overwhelmed with bodies. More prisoners to trade, release, and interact with. In addition to all the prisoners you got before, now you'll get a new class of prisoner who are unwaveringly loyal to their home. They can't be recruited, but they can. And be sold sent home for diplomatic benefits used for gene extraction or blood farm and biotech i like that that's a nice change because you know people could be very stubborn i just hope that it betrays to a certain trick to you know a set of traits that would be nice if it if you did it with that then i could 100 percent get on board with that if it kind of comes in that comes and goes at random that i kind of wouldn't agree with it would definitely need to be as part of traits I call them those traits. So maybe a psychopath, they won't, you can't recruit us. Maybe you won't be able to recruit a psychopath because you know, they're crazy. They don't really care. They're sort of, or what would be another one? Uh, I think desensitize. Maybe it would be nice to see some of them made harder to recruit. Like I have it given an extra difficulty where it's not advised that you recruit them, but if you want to, you still can try. Uh, Blood farming, that's gonna be interesting. Or used in ideal or used in rituals and enslaved in ideology. 
course, you could still enslave them. We did this because we wanted to make you all all the uses for prisoners besides recruitment and more viable, adding a new stream of unwavering loyal, loyal prisoners that does not that, that does that without destroying the population progression balance. This can be disabled in the storyteller settings. Okay, so if you don't want it in there, you can disable it. I like that. New manage new mod manager UI. Okay, so we got this. Eh, I'm still going to go with a mod manager myself, but I appreciate the effort there. New mod, add mismatch window, new options menu, heat overlay, and overlay for heat. Oh, that's really nice. Quick quest search bar. Thank you. Thank you. You have no idea how difficult, especially if I want to look up a past quest that I don't remember getting or trying to see hey did i figure this out thank you tile inspector show a detail of a specific tile when you hover over and press the alt key also very useful thank you for that this is the full change log here i'm not going to read it because i don't have the time to read it but uh go ahead oh, maybe we'll quickly go through it new gases so paint customization I guess this is all the stuff that is coming for 1.4. So paint and color customization is going coming to base game. Ga gas, turrets, gear, and medicine. So it adds bulk medicine creation. Also fantastic. Good one. Add an explicit 10 without medicine option to draft pawns, which appears after the 10 with medicine order. Again, thank you for this. Thank you. Because you have no idea how frustrating it is that I can't get any... Med I don't have any medicine. Then I have to go search and that can make a difference between life and death shelves thank you ui stuff very nice Some miscellaneous stuff there as well we kind of read upon it improvements and adjustments base game hey, the startup time is very nice pyromat <laughs> pyromatics are happy around fire stacking up to very nice colors could be ordered to be well drafted perfect thank you yes yes agreed good wimp trades paint shock threshold has been increased from 50 percent to 60 percent very hungry pawns now wake up if there's food available and they aren't very tired. Nice change there. Pawns kicked out of bed, blah, 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 blah. You, you can read this. If, you can pause to read this if you guys like or go on the page to read it. Oh, he's got, these have got a little bit of adjustments. Imperial champions can use spears and long swords. Skip and chaos skip have a max body size, max body set size. Gun link no longer counts as clothing for nudity. I didn't know that was... A, Limit noble wimp to knight or pr or praetor. All right, I could. See, that's reasonable. Ensures persona weapons are unbound if you leave them on a map temporarily. Okay. A uh, bunch of stuff for ideology. You got dev tools. You got some technical stuff there. Again, pa pause this if you want to read this or go read it on there. I don't have the time to go to cover it all. Maybe a different day. Maybe on a different time we will. What's next? We'll be posting blogs over the next few weeks about specific biotech features. Stay tuned for those. Translation for you guys. Stay tuned for more videos. The biotech expansion is our biggest yet. We've hired more people and took more time than ever before to create more systems, content, and storytelling possibilities. There's so much that we considered splitting into two set this into two separate pod products, but decided to keep it all together as one extra juicy expansion. Biotech release date isn't quite announced, but within weeks. But we'll be within weeks. More to come. Join the Reddit discussion. Blah blah blah. After 14 months of work, the team is very excited to finally bring you biotech. I am. I believe this will come up before Christmas time. 100%. I hope it does. But yeah, I like what I see here. I love. This is awesome. I'm very excited to see what they've got. What else they've got planned for us? Well, I'm pretty sure. Like last time, we got a good, good bunch of the gist here. Sure, the next few updates will be next bit will sort of be breaking down the specifics of what we got. We'll definitely be getting a probably definitely be getting a blog explaining the mechanator, one explaining the gene modding, and then another one going into more detail about child and reproduction and sort of the mechanics behind that. I really want to know what this is here. That would be very nice to figure that out. It looks like it's something that only comes when it's pollution, so maybe it's a. I'm not sure. 
We'll figure that out. But anyways, I gotta go now because it's get. I gotta go to bed because I gotta wake up in the morning for work. So thank you everybody for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Hit the subscribe button if you really enjoyed. Don't forget to share this video or any of my other videos to anybody who you think will enjoy my content. Definitely leave comments. I'll be responding to every single one that I see for these videos. Let's start a discussion. Let's discuss the future potentially for this. And yeah, go from there. Very very similar to what happened with ideology. That one we had some good discussions. And it was actually some of the more popular videos for the channel too. But anyways, that's all for now, ladies and gentlemen. Till next time, take it easy.